I often think about this scene from Succession where Logan Roy says, "I make my nut off what people really want. Don't tell me about people. I'd go flat broke in a week if I didn't." There's something so unsettling about this line, you know. Of course, series mein aisa lagta hai that this guy has seen the world and he just evaluates people and culture based on that life experience. But when you really think about it, you realize what we really want, feel, think and experience is just data to billionaires like Logan Roy. He hasn't become filthy rich by just being a good judge of character or culture. He's smart, but it takes much more than that even in the fictional world of succession. And that's what billionaires and super successful private companies do in real life as well. They take our experiences as data and use that raw material to make insane amounts of profits. Who is it that they are really selling and who is buying it? Are they even selling something real or tangible to us or do they just create experiences that manipulate our choices as individuals, society and a democracy? The answer to these questions lie in the fascinating and chilling story of something called surveillance capitalism. Let's first try to understand what it means and what's what its origin story is. In 2019, ek Harvard professor, business school professor, Shoshana Zuboff ne ek book likhi thi, The Age of Surveillance Capitalism. She has a background in business, believes in the system of capitalism and has studied social psychology. Despite her faith in the system of capitalism, she went on to pinpoint a development in it that she thought could destroy democracy and society as we know it. She defines surveillance capitalism as a system where all human experience becomes free raw material for capitalists to use it as behavioral data. Think about your Fitbits, calendars, GPS data, Kindle bookmarks and social media posts as well as free tracking apps. All of our life experiences have some form of technology involved in them kisi na kisi tarike se. So the answer to the question who is that they're selling is quite simple. You are the raw material the product and the consumer of their product too it's like we're living 24/7 as a subject in a focus group and all the wealth that giants like google microsoft amazon and facebook generate is kind of based on 24/7 exploitation of our life our experiences and our labor this is really creepy yes but some of you might feel that iske badle mein they offer us so much free choice no sure they record our data but it's only to better the quality of our lives and society surveillance capitalism has conditioned most of us into believing that all this is true but in reality it doesn't offer us unlimited free choice in fact it limits how we come across products services and information think about facebook for example you think ki jab uska like feature react feature mein expand hua you could react angrily lovingly comically to the same post it was to enhance your experience on social media right that's visual but not entirely true kyunki those reactions allowed facebook to accurately understand what you felt about that post and that emotional data was used to better push related ad and products to you study after study has shown that mental health issues and vulnerabilities are worsened for social media users as its algorithm relies on using your behavioral data to continue to push a vicious cycle of content that you react to or respond to even if it causes a mental health spiral for you a chalo theek hai you might say that these are kind of exceptions we should accept matlab the benefits outweigh the cost and all that so let me share a secret with you ye state of exception hamara new normal ban chuka hai in the covid 19 pandemic something called the crisis surveillance capitalism became stronger than ever in the entire world and this is why as economies crashed health infrastructure collapsed and millions of people died all over the world the rich got richer and while this happened the big five tech companies saw their stock prices soaring and billionaires got exponentially richer this isn't a happy coincidence but a symptom of a disease that is surveillance capitalism This is because privacy and data protection kind of took a back seat during the pandemic and the state of exception or emergency became common across countries all over the world. Isse private companies got even more leniency than they had earlier to use your data as raw material for their profits. According to media reports, Europe mein jahan pe GDPR which is the General Data Protection Regulation is kind of the gold standard for privacy regulations and exists in in Europe. 
आफ्टर कोविड ऐसा सीन हो गया था दैट देर नेशनल हेल्थ सर्विस एंड अदर गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फ्रीली शेयर एंड एक्सेस ऑल काइंड ऑफ हेल्थ लोकेशन एंड अदर डेटा विच वॉज प्रीवियसली सीन एज सेंसिटिव एंड पर्सनल दे जस्ट हैड टू से दिस इज टू फाइट कोविड बट टूडे स्टडी शो दैट अराउंड सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ कॉन्टैक्ट ट्रेसिंग एप्स इन द वर्ल्ड डोंट इवन नो वॉट दे आर ट्रैकिंग क्लियरली and they don't provide any terms and conditions up front invade your privacy in shocking ways uh, with surveillance cameras and footage after all this massive data collection you will think that at the very least they'll keep your data safe right but the truth is that this isn't even the bottom line or the concern for companies at all think about how it tech boomed during covid okay massive profits they made with the premise of making education accessible for everyone kyunki school school college to sab band ho gayi thi and online education had become the new normal byju's become a unicorn guys and what did it do to keep children's data safe next to nothing data breaches where teachers is data students is sensitive personal data and so much more were left exposed on its servers are nothing new or surprising anymore from toys to video games to their education Surveillance capitalism hasn't even left our children safe, as their rights are threatened while profit margins skyrocket. And you know the worst part: surveillance capitalism has snatched one of the most basic aspects of our freedom, our right to choose what happens to our own life. The market dominance of players like Google and Amazon is so strong and severely unchecked by laws that they don't even provide you the option to opt into their use of their uh, your data. as their product and profit their shady privacy policies don't allow you to actually choose aapko aapki privacy bechni bhi hai ya nahi that's just assumed as a default they only provide an opt out option hidden somewhere in the fine print because they know ki jis din unhone ye system transparent or choice centric kar diya they will lose access to a lot of your data and your life won't be in their lab experiment anymore so what does this lab experiment get you in the show mad men there's something that don draper an advertising guy says which really answers what surveillance capitalism gets you he says the reason you haven't felt it is because it doesn't exist what you call love was invented by guys like me to sell nylons that's what it does your life experiences become free raw material for tech giants to sell to ad companies insurance companies governments and everyone under the sun and this is used to manipulate your future Think about how sensitive and intimate health data is weaponized by insurance providers to fuel their profits from you or how clickbait posts on Facebook and social media run rampant even if they are misinformation or hate speech because more clicks equal more ad revenue and profits for these businesses so your life isn't just used to predict what can be sold to you but your life itself is sold as data to the highest bidder and then that data is used to manipulate and create a future that is profitable to these giants in her book zubov says that surveillance capitalism makes it impossible for democracies to survive as we know them iska sabse interesting example hai europe's general data protection regulation in the gdpr data such as your location details political views behavior on social media etc is supposed to be anonymized or pseudonymized which means that aise factors just say information can be traced back to you usse eliminate karna data processors ki responsibility hai this deidentification of data and its method seems amazing on the surface so they they seem like they will kind of enhance privacy for the people right wrong because this is kind of like a red herring from an agatha christie mystery Firstly, studies show that non-personal data is always at risk of being de-anonymized easily. Secondly, as more and more data is de-anonymized and used for re-identification, it becomes even more easy to use it as behavioral data in bulk for businesses without following the privacy standards that would be used for personal data. So, even if the personal information is removed from the data, it is very easy to add it back, which makes it easy for businesses to use our human experiences as their private property and we as a society have a tendency to see individualistic human rights as more important these days than the harm caused to the entire community aur is chakkar mein sabse zyada risk hota hai to the most systematically oppressed groups of societies jinke sexuality gender identity religion ethnicity caste ye sab unhe hamesha heightened surveillance risk pe rakhta hai 
by allowing anonymized data to flourish as behavioral data and become free raw material for businesses the greatest cost we are paying is by surrendering our rights as a democratic society putting the most vulnerable at the most highest risk as class disparities widen and wealth gap increases an example of this can be seen with a uyghur muslim in china where tech enabled capitalism and extraction of social media data meets the chinese surveillance regime and xenophobic policing creating something that anthropologist darren byler calls terror capitalism and do you know the funny part india ke paas currently to koi data protection law hi nahi hai to mitigate this issue when the data from our human experiences our lives is threatened by the government as the fuel for a new economy then what recourse do we have left okay it wasn't as funny but as barney stinson often says true story guys finally the tricky part with surveillance capitalism is that it behaves like a nice guy trope acting all sweet and altruistic facebook with its connecting the world motto google bringing information at our fingertips and claiming to do no evil amazon making our lives super convenient and they do that no deny that but we need law makers and policy makers to get in touch with reality get over the complex and fancy looking tech jargon and understand what's best for us as a society we all may love succession but we can't let our society descend to a point jahan entrepreneurs can dial presidents and prime ministers at their fingertips and push people down to drown for their profits this is happening right now I know that but we need to fight this to the end because trust me it will become worse the dystopia is real and we need to find a way back from it soon kyunki surveillance capitalism hame kitna bhi nice guy no matter how much it charms us the reality is something truly sinister it is not a nice guy in essence and it's high time we recognize and remember it all too well mystery adha christi mystery <laughs> it's not <laughs> possible why am i even do this